yes a new series is coming welcome back guys I hope you are doing well there um, in this series we will be learning about embedded security devices and we will be practicing that on the micro corruption um, CDF so for those who do not know micro corruption is a CDF developed by the NCC group um, I have sampled upon that when I think I have watched the live overflow video and he was the first one who um, just who showed me the website I think I think by just watching his videos but yes it is actually an unbelievable website where you have to actually hack locks and try to reverse engineer them just to get the password that is on the lock so actually guys we have different locks in different countries in the world and each time we have to reverse engineer the lock um, the lock software to just unlock it actually so the lock is actually guys um, is actually guys um, let's just say some code that is written on an embedded device um, that is specified or specific to do some kind of task and the task is actually to either um, unlock the door or just stay locked so yeah so, it's, so that's a pretty simple job to do so <clears throat> to do that we have uh, we have just write the code inside of the inside of the embedded device which is actually um, the MSP 430 which is actually a cord or, or a microchip let's say so we have the MSP 430 in case you don't know it so this is actually the microchip that will that we will be writing the software in and actually we are not the one that we will be writing the software but the software was written on that microchip so yeah so in order to play the micro corruption challenges you need first to read the manual and I will be trying to read the manual with you so don't worry I will be trying to explain everything from A to Z um, what else so once we read the manual we will be trying to solve the first three challenges which are the tutorial New Orleans and Vancouver then I will be trying to keep on solving the other challenges for you and one thing to mention you don't have to follow me along the video as long as you didn't try it on yourself so first thing to do is before I try to solve anything you should try it with yourself first then if you are for example if you get stuck then go back and watch my uh, my walkthrough and try to understand what I'm doing and don't worry I will try to explain everything just as simple as I can so yeah so let's start reading the manual so introduction so the lock ID Pro is the first of a new series of locks so it is controlled by a MSP 413 micro um, microcontroller so the question that can arises here guys is what is the what is a microcontroller exactly the first thing and what is the difference between a microcontroller and the computer that you, are, that you are using in order to watch my video? So, just to put it, just to put it simple, a computer is just, um, is just like a tool that can do many different things. And we have talked that in my previous videos. For example, if you want to play a game or you browse the internet or, I don't know, you watch my videos, you write a document, you are messaging someone just to do that you can do or you can just use the computer but it's designed to just handle a wide range of tasks which is why we call it for example um, just general purpose for example when we talk about computers on the other hand for example microcontrollers is just like more of, of someone who is expert at doing something for example it's really good at doing specific jobs for example like controlling let's just say robots robots I don't know movements or for example regulating the, temp the temperature in a house um, stuff like that so microcontrollers are just designed to excel at this particular tasks just making them perfect for all sorts of gadgets and appliances I think so while the computers um, are great 
tool just for all kind of tasks, let's just say general tasks. Um, I think microcontrollers just shines when it comes to specific jobs, for example, like this task with the um, the microcontroller or the MSP430 is just going to be unlocking the door for us. So let's try to understand more. So the MSP430 is a very low power device which allows the Lock ID Pro to run almost um, in almost any environment. So the Lock ID Pro contains a Bluetooth chip um, allowing it to communicate with the Lock ID Pro iPhone app allowing the lock to be accessible from the exterior of the building okay or to be inaccessible I'm sorry from the exterior of the building so that means that uh, we will be having an application that will be communicating with our microchip or our, our or with our chip just um, using this application we can communicate with the microcontroller and try to open up the door just using the application so we will be sending the password I suppose from the application um, using Bluetooth and the um, and the chip needs to be checking the password that will be passed using the application and yes if the password is true or is right then we get access to the door otherwise um, I suppose he will be throwing us away <clears throat> so there is no default password on the Lock ID Pro upon receiving the Lock ID Pro, which is obvious, and a new password must be set by connecting it to the Lock ID Pro iPhone app and entering a password when prompt, and then restarting the Lock ID Pro using the red button on the back. So this is how you set password for this microcontroller chip or this or for this lock specifically. So you have to connect the um, you have to connect to it and then set the password then um, you try, you need to be having physical access to the log just by just by using the red button on the back of it so there are several additional attachments to the lock ID pro which are described in this document so we have two other um, additional attachment which means we have two other components with the lock itself which are actually hardware security modules so the Lock ID Pro Deadbolt and the Lock ID Pro Bluetooth connector. Okay. So what is the MSP430? So the Lock ID Pro is controlled using a modified TI MSP430, and the TI MSP430 is one of the world's most popular microcontrollers. So they are extremely inexpensive and can be powered off a lemon which allows customers to deploy the Lock ID Pro in any location without concern for power. Okay, So the Lock ID Pro comes pre-programmed but can be reprogrammed, which is really interesting, allowing customers to load whatever software they wish on the lock. Okay, that's actually more interesting now. So the MSP430 is a conventional 16-bit register risk architecture. Okay, since we are Talking about risk architecture, I suppose this series will be interested um, or will be interesting for people who are interested in ARM or actually have dealt with ARM before. For those who do not know, ARM is based on this architecture which is RISC, which is a reduced instruction set. Um, with a RAM based stack, we have a RAM based stack that's really interesting too. We have 16 registers, okay, and a simple memory map. And I love this word which is simple. Because it is simple, it will be fine. So a brief introduction to the MSP430 assembly is given in the section. Okay, that's good. So what are software interrupts? I suppose the word is not new for people who watch my videos. So I suppose since if you have watched my videos, I suppose you will be able to know what software interrupts are. So Lock ID All has extended the MSP430 to support software interrupts implemented with the call gate at the address CRX. So this is how he is um, implementing the software, which is this is the call gate at the address, okay, and, um, on the micro corruption unit. So when the CPU executes the instruction at this address, the CPU begins executing special purpose Lock ID Pro code to perform special purpose functions, such as printing characters to the console or requesting terminal input. The interrupt kind is passed um, 
and this passed into the resistor 2, um, the state you resistor on the high byte. Arguments are passed on the stack, okay. So the interrupts are described in detail in section 4, okay. Memory protection, so some version of the log attic pro contains memory protection which allows um, each of the 256 pages to be either executable or writable, okay, that makes sense, but never both, just some kind of memory protection, just to prevent you from executing, um, from writing and executing code, okay, so this prevents many common attacks, okay, such as, um, I don't really remember, it's just, it just feels like it is just some stack execution or something, but yeah. Anyway, so there is an interrupt for the log ID Pro which enables memory protection, okay, and there are interrupts to specify whether a given page should be executable or writable, okay. What else? So the door lock. So while the log ID Pro contains the circuitry to function, it does not contain a physical lock. So the door lock, so the log ID Pro does not contain a lock inside of it, so the door lock must be attached to the output pin 7 of the microcontroller. Okay, so we have to attach the lock or the physical lock to the pin 7 and the pin 7 I suppose will be controlling if the lock will be opened or not. For example, if we send one to the pin 7 of the microcontroller then we will be unlocking the door otherwise it will be locked. That's a pretty basic thing just to see. Yeah. Pretty basic, yeah. So this is um this enables the CPU to trigger the software interrupt. Okay, which is this is the number of the software interrupt, which is 0x7f, to directly trigger the door lock to unlock. So the door lock automatically relocks after the door has been opened, and no further command must be sent to it. Okay, that's really interesting. So what's the what's the, what is the Hardware security model one. So Lock ID includes several hardware security model interfaces along with the Lock ID Pro. The first of these is the model one. So the model one of the hardware security model contains a simple interface which allows the microcontroller to test if an entered password is valid. By default, the interrupt 0x7d will pass a given password to the HSM and will set a byte in memory if the password entered matches the stored password, okay? And the stored password can be reset by detaching the HSM from the lock and attaching, attaching it to the Model 1 reset device, also included. So we have different kind of models that can be um, that can be used to check if the password is right or wrong, and we have also a reset password um, mechanism by using the HS in another HSM model, which is um, just reset the device. Okay, that's cool. Um, I suppose I don't have to read the other one. Now let's try to see how to develop for the Look at it Pro. So just to develop, so I suppose it is it will be some vanilla C. For those who do not know what C is doing, that's just some pretty basic C. So to um, you can use Ubuntu, I suppose, um, to run this code and actually um, to compile and run it. So to you have first to install the com to install the compiler for the for the MSP 430 by just doing sudo app get install gcc MSP. Um, and then I suppose this is just an example of how you can, for example, develop for the MSP. For example, um, he's allocating a pointer, just setting the password to the string password, then allocating some buffer, and then printing what is the buffer, then he's getting 15 bytes and um, filling the buffer with some bytes or some characters and then he is iterating through the through the password and the buffer and he is comparing the string password with what the buffer is having inside of it so as l so if one of them is different then he returns one and if the password of the buffer is different by doing um, store PW, we are actually accessing the value at that address. For those who do not, what pointers are, you should be trying to check pointers in order to understand the code. But it's pretty simple. Yeah. And then he is going to be calling the interrupt 0x7, which will be trying to, I suppose, check the password for you. Yeah. 
So the C standard library, so this is some kind of pretty basic thing about C. Anyone who knows C should be able to understand that. Um, let's go on. So these are the different interrupts that we have. So for example, the getchar interrupt actually reads a single byte or um, of buffered input and takes no argument. We have also the interrupt 0x72 which is the gets interrupt and it will be reading a specific number of bytes to a standard input takes two arguments, the first is the address to place this string, the second is the maximum number of bytes to read null bytes are not handled, especially null terminated okay um, so turn on depth, so pages are either executable or writable but never both but using this you are actually um, you are actually turning on the um, the the memory protection. Yes. Uh, we have also the interrupt Zerex of eleven, which marks the page as either only executable or only writable, and we have all the other kind of interrupts. Now let's move on to what's really more interesting, which is the instruction set of the MSP four hundred thirty. So. The opcode, um, or actually the instruction, is divided into three. As if, so if you have watched my, obviously my Intel 8664 videos, I suppose you should be able um, to understand what an opcode is doing, what the source and the destination are. If you remember from, from the Intel 86, I suppose we have seen something like that. For example, we have move eix um, 0x72 actually if you have um, this is actually in the Intel 8664 now when we talk about let's say risk architecture or risk architectures for example in this case we are trying to program the MSP 430 we can use um, since we have 16 registers we can use for example register 1 and we actually want to for example move on 2 into register 1 so this is how you do it actually you can do that just by using 0x2 by doing by adding a hashtag we are actually saying that this is a constant and we are moving 2 into the register 1 don't worry we'll be seeing that in um, in this part yeah so this is the opcode it can be a move it can be an add it can be um, it can be a sap, it can be a bis, it can be whatever, it can be a jump. So this is the opcode, this is the source, this is the destination. It's actually the opposite of what the Intel 86 are having. That's why it's another, <laughs> let's just say, architecture. Um, yeah, anyway, when sources and destination refer to registers, constants, or memory locations, for example, one of the most common lines may read, um, maybe read something like, th like this. For example, add 10 to the register 15. This is actually um, just to break down this for you. Um, so, uh, register one, yeah. So this is will be doing like register fifteen plus ten, and the result obviously should be stored in the register fifteen itself. Yeah. So which is simply as you can see like that. So instruction can operate on the following registers: the working state of the processor. Um, the program counter is a special register that identifies the address of the next instruction to run. Okay. The stack pointer, another special register that identifies a specific region of memory carved out for temporary storage. Okay, we already know what the stack pointer here is. Um, memory, which stores most of the state of the program. The CPU flags, which record things like whether the last instruction produced the value of zero or set the sign. We already know that too. There are just two kinds of instructions: arithmetic instructions like add and compute values and sort their results. Okay, control transfer instructions, such as for example the compare, the jump, etc. Um, the arguments to instructions in MSP 433 can have one of the following forms. For example, rx reference the values stored in rx directly. For example, when we do r1, we actually reference the value into the register r1. Um, when we do at r1, for example, we actually 
and reference the value in the memory stored at the address indicated by Rx. For example, if R1 contains 0x12, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, we actually try to access um, 0x1234. Yeah, this is how this is how we do it. Yeah. So if we do Rx plus, we actually also increment the value of the Rx. So for example, if we do R1 equals to we do we add the plus. Um, for example, let's suppose um, this will be three. Uh, let's add the hexadecimal value. Yeah. So x2. Uh, so this will be 0x1234 equals to 0x2 and it will be also incrementing r1 equals to r1 plus 1. Yeah. Um, we also have the constant I have already just talked about it and we see the reference the value in memory stored at the offset r0 plus c. Okay. Um, now, these are the different kind of opcodes that we can have. We have the move, we have the add, we have the sub, we have the bitwise operations, which are the and, the XOR, and the bis, and the BIC. Okay, so the BIC is the actually, um, just it will be just clearing the bits in argument one from argument two, <laughs> which are pretty good. Okay. Um, I don't see actually a lot of differences between the BIC and the and but we can just call it bit clear okay this is bit clearing the um, the bits in argument one from argument two um, this is just uh, a simple or um, what else this is the XOR already you know it um, we have also the compare which will, which will be just trying for example to subtract the argument one from argument two and then setting the flags and discard the result. We have also bit that will be just setting the flags and discarding the result. Just like the test on the 86, if you remember it, that will be trying to test if the two values are true or not. We have also the push, or just pushing the um, just pushing a value into the stack. One more interesting fact is that it will be subtracting two bytes. Why two bytes? Because the architecture is 16 bits. Which means that, for example, a value could be, for example, 0x, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is actually um, 16 bits. So, for example, if you want to put that on the stack, you have to put it that way. We have to put, for example, this is the first value on the stack. To push another value, we need to just add that. So, those are the values. And, for example, let's suppose the first address will be 0x, 0, 0, 0, 10, um, or let's just say 9. So this is the first value, this is the top of the stack, which is 0x009, and we have E7, 07, yes. So yes, so this is the first value that we have pushed into the stack, and this is the second value. Just because, for example, if we, if you remember from the Intel 86, when the architecture is 32-bit, we actually sub 4. And when the architecture is 64-bit, um, we sub 8 from the ESP from the RSP. Just if you remember from the Intel 86. In our case, actually, we will be subbing subbing two bytes um, from the stack pointer yeah so this is the push uh, the pup is actually the pup is actually going to be moving what's uh, on the r1 plus for example when you pup um, I don't know for example, when you put, for example, something into, let's say, 
built into R1. It's actually going to be setting the stack pointer equals to stack pointer minus 2 and moving actually uh, what's in the stack pointer. Uh, what's in the stack pointer is actually uh, into the R1. Yeah. And then we will we have the jump which will be jumping into some kind of location. We have the call. We have the return also. Uh, we have also GXX which will be taking for example G and Z, um, G Z. You know them from the intro if you have watched the video. So yeah, this is the instruction set that we have. Let's try to solve the first tutorial. So I know what I'm doing. Just let me go. Okay. So this is the interface of the um, this is the interface of the micro corruption challenges. So we have the first thing to notice is the register state, which contains the different kind of values that the register are having. We have the program counter, the stack pointer, the state U register, the CG. So let's ignore that. The register four, five, um, until. 15. We have the current instruction that shows you the current instruction that will be executed. We have debugger console such as the GDB, and we also have live memory dump which contains the actual um, values into the memory and obviously a disassembly of the code that will be, um, let's just say, executed inside of the MSP 430. Yeah. Um, now, we have just to learn some kind of um, syntax just to deal with the debugger. We have some kind of commands that are the same as the GDB. For example, um, to start um, debugging, you need to type in continue. So, what does continue do exactly? Continue. So, continue, guys, start is actually trying to start the program so the first thing to do is we see that the CPU has requested user input from the console below the output displayed on the console so he's saying to us enter the password to continue for example let's type in 123 um, by checking here if entering hex encode input you actually can send uh, he will be actually interrupting the input as hex for example you can send 2d FC um, C4 something like that but we will be sending ASCII code so or ASCII input so I'll be sending one two three yeah so when we put or when we uh, when we type in send uh, we actually see that this is where the program counter now is pointing to which is zero zero ten if we see it we see that there is a zero zero ten there so yeah if we type in continue we see that we hit um, we hit the end, which is the stop program execution. Now let's try to reset the code and type in, let's say, C again. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, for example. And we hit send. And we see that we have invalid password try again. As the This is the input output console where he prints to you what the output of the um, program is and what is the input also yeah so this is actually the standard output if you have a computer inside uh, if you have a computer a computer in front of you this is actually the standard output yeah okay um, now for example I suppose this is actually um, the code that will be executed I'll be trying to get that code and let's do guys some static analysis on it um, okay, let's do just some static analysis. The first thing that I want to search for is, is the main. Um, I'm not interested in what's above the main. Uh, okay, what else? What do we have in here? Okay, so let's just do some pretty good basic static analysis on the code. Okay, it's because it's a simple arm, we can do that. Um, so um, this instruction he is setting the stack pointer at um, this value so he is adding something to the stack pointer which is pretty common when we try to align or do some stack alignment okay what else do we have we have the move so he's moving some string into the register 15 and he's calling the boots by doing that we have understood that 
the calling convention for this specific architecture is that he moves down the arguments into the registers for example just to explain this for you guys what else do we have for example let's suppose you want to be calling a function um, random random and it will be taking argument 1 and argument 2 and argument 3 actually he will be passing these arguments using register so register 13 will be used register 14 will be used and register 15 will be used too so register 15 will be containing argument 1 register 14 will be containing argument 2 and register 13 will be containing argument 3 so um, he is using a reversed um, reversed way just the first order I'm sorry to pass down arguments so yeah we'll be trying we will be seeing that a lot in the code this is explain for you how things are done yeah um, so he passed down the pass the string that he will be printing and then he calls the puts then he's moving the address of the stack pointer into so in this he is moving just the address of the stack pointer which is um, let's suppose it's address stack pointer of the stack pointer into the register 15 then he is getting the password so that means that he will be putting our password that the password that will, we will be giving at the input at this position which is the address of the stack pointer which means for example if the stack pointer for example um, if the stack pointer is equal to let's say the rex um, 4444 four, 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 then he will be passing down this address and you the get password and our password should be at this position so after just doing that after just getting for example after typing the password for example password uh, equals to I don't know 123 for example then this 0x444 four, 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 I'm sorry should be equal to um, one two three yeah so after that he's moving what's in the stack pointer again into the register 15 and we know that the stack pointer is having for example the rex 4444 now he is then moving again the um, the value of that into the actually the 0x44 into the register 15 and we have register 15 equals to 0x444 four, 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 four. yeah so he's moving again the address of the string that we have input uh, input it so then he's calling the check password and then he's testing if the register 15 equals to 1 so if the register 15 so G and Z which means we will be jumping if it's not equal which means if it is a 0 then we will be jumping the dollar sign is actually the current um, the current instruction you can just for example um, just change it for example <laughs> this way in case you um, in case you don't understand what this instruction is doing just imagine um, just another version of the instruction should could be um, just jump if not um, equals into this address plus 0x c um, and the instruction should be the access granted so um, so that means that <clears throat> so that means if the instruction is not equal then he will be jumping there otherwise he will be um, otherwise he will be printing invalid password and then jumping to the um, just do the clear of the register 15 and just exiting the uh, exiting the program so to be able to jump in here we should be um, we should be trying to for example set the test or the register 15 into the right condition so enough I think of for now for for static analysis and let's try to run this program so the first thing that we have to do I suppose is try to set some breakpoints to so to set breakpoint for example um, into the com 
version we should be able to just write for example in here okay we can just set a breakpoint in here just using the mouse um, and try to for example see just to uh, yeah no, just one thing to say guys before or after just running the program for example for the first time or the second time each time you have to reset the processor so to do that you have to type in reset then continue then for example setting one two three um, then we hit the continue again we hit now the breakpoint and we want to see what the test is having so the test and the register 15 we see that it sees that so it's not um, so we have a carry it means it's not equals to <laughs> it's not equal to zero um, we also need to see what the register 15 is having. so it's a zero it's not a one so it should be a one in order to be able to jump into this position so let's write for example to step if we step we see that this is the invalid try again so let's write to reset let's write to continue again send one two three send for example C we hit the breakpoint again now let's try to change the resistor 15 result let's for example um, for example in this position or in this instruction I'm sorry let's write to reset continue one two three continue again we hit the breakpoint let's try to change it for example let's set into it for example 0x 0x Zero 01 you can see that this is now the value of the register 15 now let's write to test on that value we see step we see now that the now that the state of register is having a carry which is a 1 which is not equals to 0 then if we step we see now that the access granted is is for, is for us now yeah now if we try to just continue the execution of the program you see that door is unlocked we have unlocked the first door guys congratulations now what's really interesting is that we have used the debugger we did not solve the challenge in order to solve the challenge we have to type in solve and we need to give the right password in order to solve for example if I give one two three it's not going to be solving the problem because we have cheated um, because we have cheated on the um, on the system actually we have cheated on the challenge itself we did not find the password or the right password now what's really interesting to find out the right password we can use the check password function or we need to reverse engineer the check password now where is the check password let's do it so the check password okay so since the check password just for you just remember it will be passing the register 15 which contains the address of the stack pointer which is our input yeah so he is now moving B which is which stands for moving one byte so he is moving one byte which is uh, he's moving one byte into the register 14 which is register 15 which is for example let's suppose our input um, which is equals to 1 2 3 in our case it will be the 1 this one fact to say that we have um, an empty slash 0 which means that this is the end of uh, of a string um, yeah and then we will be incrementing that one for us so register for 15 equals to register 15 plus 1 um, what else register now 12 equals to register 12 plus 1 and he is testing if if what exactly so he's testing if the um, it's actually a one. So and yeah. So if one is equals so if one is equals to one, yes, in this case, and then 
jump if not equal into the current address minus 0x8 which means we will be moving into this so this is actually a loop so this is a loop so this is a loop this is a loop we can just for example so this is a loop okay uh, if we try to see what this loop is uh, having as boundaries, we see that he's comparing the R12 with the Zero X9, which means that the resistor 12 in this case, resistor 12 is the I, or is the counter of the loop. Now, for example, we can change that, for example, for int I equals, so just to see some high level code, for example, in C. Um, for example, for int i equals to 0, e inferior is to, for example, 0x9. So, since he is comparing that with the r12, so he will be doing that from 0. Suppose if we start from 1, we hit the boundary, which is that one. Yeah. Plus, plus. Yeah. So, this is the, um, the header of the loop. Um, and he will be comparing that with the R12. Then jump if it is equal to. So he will be comparing the resistor 12 with the 9. Um, otherwise, mm, wait a second. Um, this is the conversion of the resistor 12 with the 9. I suppose this is not the one that will be controlling the first loop. I'm sorry. This is um, this is another conversion. So this is the instruction that will be controlling the loop. So for int i equals to one, it's not if you're equals to nine. It's actually checking if the resistor fourteen is equals to zero. Yeah. Um, if it is not, it will be looping again. So it's actually a while. So while Register 14 different from the byte zero or the um, or the end of this thing. As long as we did not hit or we did not hit the end of this ring, we will be looping. Yeah. Now, if the register 12 is equals to 0x9. It means we have nine characters since the counter in this case is the resistor 12 because it is because the resistor 12 is the one that is counting how much characters we are trying to um, we are trying to loop in <coughs> um, so if it is equal to nine then we go into the current address plus 0x6 which is this one um, which will be moving one into the resistor 15, which is the intended value. Otherwise, it will be clearing the resistor 15 and setting zero inside of it and returning. So, in order to bypass or to have the access granted, we need to put into the resistor 15 a one. So, in order to do that, we need to make the check password right. And in order to do that, we need to give nine characters. Congratulations, we have reversed the code now. Let's try to um, validate what we think is right. Um, see if we give, for example, iron byte. Iron byte is actually eight characters plus a null character, which is zero, should be solving the challenge. Yeah. So, yes. So, if you are connected, you can do it. So, yes. So, let's solve it. Uh, Iron bytes, yeah. Let's go. So this is the first tutorial, and it is solved. Now let's go into New Orleans. Let's see what this New Orleans is having. So same thing before we try. Let's try to read the code. Um, let's try to find the main again. Oh yeah, this is the main. I don't care too much about what's above the main. So uh, again, he's just doing some inlining, some 
in line in the stack pointer he's creating a password then he's entering the password to continue okay getting a password then checking the password oh there's a create password okay so he is creating some password and he's checking he's checking the password um, and then testing again and if it is valid then he will be giving ac access granted which is the current address plus the rec C um, yeah uh, otherwise access granted puts and then locks the door okay uh, hmm, what else do we have in here so I suppose he will be creating a password and then he's comparing that with the check password let's let's try to see what the create password is doing so create password is obviously as I thought is going to be creating some password so he's giving some value into the memory uh, so he's moving that address that address from the memory into the register 15 and then he's filling the that address with those values and then he's returning okay as you can see this is a hard-coded value we can just reconstruct that manually if we want or just by using some dynamic analysis to check that on the memory directly so let's try to see what the check password is doing now check password is always clearing the register 14 so then let's try to see how much arguments is taking that check password check password is taking one argument which is um, the password that we will be giving so what do we have so he's clearing the register 14 then he's moving the input that we will be giving into the register 13 then he will be adding um, he will be adding 0 to the register 13 then he will be comparing one byte with what's in the register uh, what's what's or with what's in the 0x24 which is the hard-coded password plus that one so that's actually going to be doing if um, input that's actually if input um, input of i let's say because I suppose this is gonna be a loop where the register 14 is the um, is the counter so comparing if the input so if they are different then we go to this address which is this one is the current address plus your XC okay I suppose this is this one Let's just to make sure that this is the um, that this is the right address we should be adding these two values okay, 0x plus 0xc 0x 44d2 44d2 I suppose this is this one yeah this is the one so he will be clearing that setting the register for 15 I'm sorry to the register 15 to 0x0 zero zero, yeah now it means if the input of register 14 is different from the hard-coded let's say hard-coded um, hard-coded password okay if it is different from the hard-coded password which is that address um, of actually the register 14 to then we um, then we jump to that address which is the clearing of the password otherwise we increment the register 14 we can uh, we can what's in the register 14 with the 0x8 um, and if it's not equal then we go again and loop again into this one which actually will be moving the register 14 or the, or the register 15 inside of that okay this is a simple loop that will it means actually it will be trying to compare 
the input that we will be giving with the hard-coded password. So it's pretty obvious to just solve such a problem. We have just to find out what is the hard-coded password. We can build it manually since we are having it inside, just in front of us, which is um, 0x um, 4d um, 2b, etc. Or we can just write down just try to set a breakpoint after just creating the password for example um, in this one just type in C we see that now I suppose the password is created since um, um, since we ha are now at this instruction I suppose the create password now is already executed and I don't remember exactly the so yeah so this is the address and the memory where the password will be stored. Now, if we go back into the memory or the live memory damp, we should be able to see exactly. Yeah, this is it. So, just for guys, for you, just to explain for you the layout of the memory live memory damp, um, in order for you to be able to read it. Uh, just open up that. Yeah. So. This is actually the um, the offset or the address of the of the 4G. So, for example, when we say we want to, for example, access 2400, so 2400 will be giving you 4G. Now, if you want, for example, to access, um, for example, 2B, this 2B will be plus one which means that th we have a 1 in here. So because it is a 16-bit architecture, the memory layout is 16-bit architecture too. It means that this is a byte, this is a 2, this is a 3, and we actually have 16 uh, 16 bits, which are actually 2 bytes. I think... Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Yeah, this is a 16 bytes. This is... A, I'm sorry, this is a 16-bit. This is a 16 bit, this is a 16 bit, um, and so on. So, yeah, so it is 2 byte multiplied by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, so it is 2 by 8, which is 16 bytes. Yeah, so just to explain the offset for you, so each time, for example, if you want to know what the 37 offset is, it's actually 2400 plus. 0, 1, 2. So, for example, to get, for example, the offset of the 37, all what you have to do is just type in 2402 in order to change it. We can just try that if you want, guys. Just wait a second before we try to see if this is now the hard coded. So, this is the hard coded password, I suppose. Um, now, if we reset. And try to solve the challenge using this one. Uh, we need to check the hex encoded because it's actually we are we are passing down hex values. Um, we send that. Yes, door unlocked. This is actually the password. Or we can do the same thing just by trying, for example, to convert the password to actual one. For example, if we if we want to throw it from from the log ID Pro application <laughs> in real world. Um, in real world case, um, so yeah, uh, yeah. So this is actually the password. No, you see, as you can see, this is the password. <laughs> anyway, um, we have solved the challenge. Let's try to solve it. Um, yeah. Yes. So this is the password. Let's go. Go back to the world of map. See, door unlocked. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so we have solved the second challenge. Now let's try to solve the Vancouver challenge too. So the Vancouver challenge. Let's try again to do some static analysis, same as we did for the other one. Um, Joel assembly, yeah, let's see, now let's search for main again, so this is the main, I don't care about what's above the main, so welcome to the test program loader, puts, um, please enter debug payload, okay, 
Um, let's track down the goals, which is a pretty good way to reverse engineer any kind of code that we have. This is another goal. Um, do we have other goals? We have a goal in here and a goal in there. Okay. Um, what else do we have? So we have the puts. Um, okay, it's gonna be just putting some some messages. Um, we have the memory set. Okay, that's that's interesting. Okay, so the memory set is having three values passed on. So it's actually gonna be calling the memory set the memory set just with those values. So register for fifteen, register fourteen, and register thirteen. In our case, it's gonna be memory just for guys. Just for you guys, for people who do not know what the memory set is doing, it's actually setting some value um, into the offset or into the address it will be given for it. For example, in our case, we are giving 0x2400 and we are clearing the register 14, which means that register 14 will be having 0x00. And this is actually the amount of bytes that we want to set. In our case, it's 0x400. Uh, so, register 13 is equal to 0x400. So, in our case, um, this is, is this is just actually setting um, the 0x2400 into just um, uh, from that from to to the address of 2400 plus 0x 100 equals to 0x 0, x, 0 yeah. so he's he's um, actually setting that range that range of um, that range of values in the memory to zero okay I suppose he's just just doing some initialization I suppose <laughs> <laughs> yeah, initializations, okay. Um, now what do we have? So he's getting the string. So he's getting a string, okay. This is the password. Let's just say the password that will be given will be stored into the 2400. Okay, now he initialized that piece of data into the memory just for the password, okay? I think we have understood what this doing is exactly. Then he's moving one byte of that register. So he's moving into the register 11. So this instruction, guys, is gonna be is gonna be um, moving one byte at that address, which is in our case 2400 and just to simulate the fact just to simulate the one byte so actually we can just use the and so he is moving one byte into the 2400 yeah others yeah then he will be doing swap byte so he will be swapping the value inside of the register 11 then doing the same thing with the offset at 1 then he's gonna be oring them I suppose this is just some adding some values I think if we try to do this dynamically it will be more efficient okay I will be switching now to dynamic analysis just to see what those instructions are doing then he is comparing what's at the offset 2402 from our input with the 2 and then invalid payload length that means that the length of the payload should be greater than the 2 okay um, what else we do we have and then he is putting executing debug payload okay okay so he is executing the payload that I will be giving so I suppose this um, this program is gonna be executing the code that I will be giving to him so let's just try to um, debug that dynamically so I don't want any 
breakpoints there. I want breakpoints. Um, I want I want to put some breakpoints inside of just after the get string. Yeah. So for example, let's just give him iron blight and see what he will be doing. So I suppose the iron blight should be at the 20 zero z 24 zero zero. Yeah. So this is the iron blight. And this is the input that we have gave. Uh, okay. Now, if we step, we see that he now the resistor 11 should be having the 69. So this is the 69. Okay. Now he will be swapping that. So that means that the 69 should be swapped with the other byte. Then he's moving. 2401 into the resistor 15 which is the 72 inside of the 15 then he's oring them together which means that 6900 0, 0 will be ored with the 0, 0, 0072 which actually will just try to concatenate them together yeah he just concatenated them together okay <laughs> then he moved what's in the 0x uh, which is 24 0, 0 plus 2 this is plus 0 plus 1 plus 2 it can actually contains 6f 6f is or actually are mo is moved into the resistor 10 okay now he's comparing what's in the resistor 10 with the 0x2 if we step we see that the comparison should be okay now he is executing the payload okay um, I suppose we don't need that. So executing payload, he said in sin address unlined. I suppose because um, because the code is invalid, he could not execute the payload. So I suppose I will be trying to set a breakpoint there and reset the program just to see how he is executing the payload exactly. So see, I don't buy it. We have the breakpoint. Now he is moving what's in the resistor 10 into the resistor 13, and then he's memory copying that. So he means means that he is copying actually some code inside of the memory. So let's just go back and see that part of the memory copy. Since we have seen that, so resistor 10, which means resistor 13, will be having the size of the payload actually. I have said that it is the side of the payload guys because as you can see he actually compared the same resistor 10 with 2 that means that and as you can see we have a message that is saying invalid payload length it means that the resistor 10 is actually the payload length and if it is not a 2 then it's invalid otherwise it's valid so it means that means that if he is moving the resistor 10 the resistor 10 inside or to the resistor 13 which is the size of the payload then the resistor 13 actually will have the size of the payload and this is actually a preparation just to call the memory copy because 13 14 15 is actually the order of the um, the order of the argument and then he is moving the 0x 2403 which is actually the source um, and this is actually the resistor 15 which is actually um, the destination which means if we go back to see what the resistor um, 11 is having we see that the resistor 11 is actually the combination of the first two bytes of the payload first byte combined actually plus by plus, I does not, I don't, I do not mean, let's say, or just for the sake of the bitwise operations, um, the second byte. So that means that, for example, if it is, if this is 23 and this is, let's say, this is the payload, this is the payload to be sent. Payload equals, for example, 23. 30, let's say 44 zero, zero, for example and let's say we have um, 0 
zero three as the size of the payload and this is now the actual payload let's say we have 23 24 QC so this is the payload that the program will be trying to execute this is the address where we will be storing the payload and this is the size of the payload I suppose now this is actually will be combining 44 with 00, zero which will give you 4400 zero, which will be the address where we will be trying to write the payload and then we actually will be moving what's in the 0x 2403 inside of that address so this will actually um, will be passing down what's in the 2403 and so on and then he's actually calling that memory address which is the 4400 which means in our case if we pass down this payload he will be copying the payload at this address and then he will be executing that code for us now let's try to see what this what this payload is going to be doing just to verify that our assumption is true uh, if we reset the code and we send down this one just to check for example if the code uh, or if this specific payload is going to be um, is going to be passed down into the to the memory yeah see see um, overwritten this let's reset again and reset okay uh, let's see hmm what is the problem let me see what do we have hmm that's right. For example, give. Okay, let's give just some simple words. For example, there is a problem. Why does not this work? Do we have something wrong? Ah, I think because I I do not have um. Because I do not have breakpoints, yeah. I suppose I will be just trying to set a, a breakpoint there, yeah. So let's go to 4400, and as you can see, yes, this is the code that we have sent, which is 2343C. 2343C, yeah. This is the code. We have other a bunch of codes too that are in there. I suppose we need also to find. I suppose that because this is a text section that contains the code, we do not want to override the code that the processor will be executing. So let's try to find out a place in memory that is empty and just try to um, just to try to write the code. I suppose the 4600 is much more better place because it is empty. Um, I suppose this is much more better. Uh, yeah. So if we reset, see, see again. I suppose now. Yeah, this is the code, or this is the payload. Now, if we call the R11, the R11 now should be now pointing to this place. Yes, this is now where the program counter is trying to execute. Now, since I have the program counter executing some bullshit, <laughs> um, it won't be doing something. Now, one thing that can came in your mind when you see something like that is, in order to solve the problem, what is the thing that you will be trying to execute? Just think of it. Yes, it's actually the code of the unlock door. Or the how to unlock a door. Now... <laughs> We don't actually know how to program in the MSP pretty good, so the first thing that came into my mind was just to check how the unlock door is working exactly and just mimic the way he's doing that just by giving him the code or that code. So 
um, in order to unlock the door we can use this code now we need to craft a payload just using this so I will be printing this payload or I will be trying to write the payload to the address 4600 let's now just forget about the size just say that the size is XX XXXX X, X, X. this is the size for now we don't know how much bytes we will be writing and we will be writing those instructions now the processor does not understand push 0x7f he understands the machine code which is 1312.7f00 now um, if we just take that and just combine it with the with the 7f we get the push 0x7f which means once the processor or the program counter hits the 1312.7f00 he will be executing this part of code which is really interesting now the other one will be the call to the interrupt now I suppose that this is the offset of the interrupt in the tutorial video we should be trying to find out the um, the interrupt offset in this um, in this challenge so it is 44 a 8 so it is 44 a 8 and if we see we see that 44 f4 and if we try to change it with 44A8, we need to flip, or we need to swap the bytes. So this is A8. Yeah. So we take that, and this is the call for this interrupt in our case. Uh, once we do that, we increment um, the stack pointer, which is the same, and we return. Now, this is the payload that we will be executing. We need to find out now the size of that payload. So, in order to find the size, um, just do length. So, the length is 24. If we divide it by 2, it is going to be 12. If we add 1 for the plus or for the, uh, or for the null byte at the end of the string, it should be equal to 0, 0, 0, D. Now, if we try to, if we try now to pass down this payload, it should be just unlocking the door for us. Um, now, if we reset, if we see, send, and see, now let's write a step and see how he will be how he will be stepping in the code as you can see now he's calling the interrupt now let's just continue and yes we have the door unlocked now that's pretty good now let's we'll try to solve it this is giving that code let's go man we did it now if you want to find vulnerabilities for a living you can just join them <laughs> I'm just uh, now just doing a shout out to the NCC group. I'm really interesting in just finding vulnerabilities with you. Just reach me out. I'm really interesting um, in any kind of internships. Just, I'm searching for internships for just for people who do not know. <laughs> if you are interested in just collaborating with me, let's do it. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I think we have hit the end of the video. Next will be Baku, which contains actually an interesting challenge. It's not actually leaked in the internet, which makes this or the next video really interesting because it's actually a cryptographic challenge where we will be dealing with the IES. Um, just 128, I suppose. Yeah. Just a pretty simple one, not that hard, which contains those. Because it's 10 points, it won't be that hard, yeah. Yes, I suppose this is the end of the video. Don't follow me on Twitter. Um, <laughs> I said don't follow me. <laughs> don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Um, don't forget to subscribe too. And yes, this series will be really interesting for people who are interested in embedded device security. Yes, see ya in another video. Bye.